What's up guys, this is Simon. Today I get to take a trip to see my friend in LA in the Tesla for his birthday. I'm excited for this drive. It's still early, it's about 6 a.m., uh, 6.30 now. Ooh, 7 a.m., I was supposed to leave at 6 a.m. We charged the Tesla to full battery and it's at 364 miles. Let's see how this trip goes, how the Tesla makes it to LA, which is much farther than Lake Tahoe. And I'll let you guys know, thanks. I forgot my coffee, so I gotta go back and get the coffee. Guys, so I'm excited. I'm driving, just leaving my place here, as you can see. Uh, now everything is being recorded, obviously on the iPhone. It's a lot easier to do that today. But it looks like I'm gonna have a stop at Kettleman City, California for 40 minutes based on this supercharging. And I'm excited. Beautiful sunrise there. So hopefully you can see it. But anyway, I, uh, I decided to take this drive with coronavirus and the flight restrictions and kind of the benefits of flying it uh, with getting there early and so forth, it just didn't make sense. Um, so I felt that a drive would be peaceful enough and fun enough, and I think it's gonna be good. So uh, I'm excited for this trip. It's gonna be three hours to my first destination, and then probably another three hours after that, after it charges. Look at that sunrise. One beauty about waking up early is the sunrises when I was working out early in the morning I would see the sunrise every day and that was pretty inspirational and motivational so but anyway we're getting on the freeway here uh, we're gonna turn on the autopilot right now autopilot's engaged it's set to 75 miles this cluster has been changed and while we're on this topic uh, there was some Tesla updates recently those updates allow you to charge your battery during off-peak hours which is amazing so you can charge your battery look at that look at that sunrise oh my god that's beautiful but anyway uh, it allows you to charge your battery during off-peak hours and that basically will lower your charging bill by a lot guys by a lot so i highly highly recommend uh, you guys check out the next video i have coming i think it's tesla's best update yet and i think that they're uh, gonna be basically a um, you know, helping the consumer save even more costs on the charging. Because the way it worked before was you would plug your car in when you got home around five or six o'clock and it would charge during peak hours. So you were paying a premium price to charge your car every day. And now with the off-peak schedule, it charges after midnight and it has the cabin prepared for you by your departure time. My departure time, I changed to 6 a.m. So everything, the air conditioning, uh, my seats are heated, everything's ready to go at 6 a.m. That's such a convenient feature and I'm paying the lowest cost to charge, which is really nice. We're still quite a ways away. And I don't like driving to Los Angeles. This is probably the second time I've done it, uh, but it may make sense today to do this, uh, to show how the Tesla works. So Kettleman all of a sudden says, I'll have 5% battery life there uh, before I get to my final destination. So I'm a little worried. So as you see, it dropped from 10% to 5% already. And I'm sure it's gonna reroute me to another charging station nearby to, uh, to get to the location. But 75 miles an hour, a charging station for 45 minutes. Let's see how this trip goes. I'll keep up with you guys updated. Guys, there are a lot more cars on the road. We've only driven for 30 miles, but so far it's going good. But if you notice, our stop is right here. That's Kettleman City. However, if the car won't make it there, it'll stop earlier or it'll tell me to take a different exit at a supercharging station. So we exited uh, 101 and we're kind of going through on East 152. And now I gotta pretty much drive. So this part's not as uh, pleasant, but you get to see the countryside of California here. to get to our destination for supercharging. You guys, take a look how beautiful the water here is, the sky. And the mountainside. The 
Tesla's doing great managing this curvy road. And so far, so good. Beautiful scenic drive. Very relaxing with the autopilot. I am a little cautious with these curves, so I hold the wheel. And I'm enjoying the ride so far. Just a quick update. It's doing great through the mountains. Battery is training much faster going in these mountains and uphill and downhill. I was noticing that I have uh, not as much mileage left and it kept telling me you got to go slower to reach your destination at 70 miles where it's very difficult to travel 70 miles on the I, on uh, I-5 because everyone's going about 80 or, or so. So I decided to pull over and charge a little bit earlier. So I am at the Tesla charging stations. It looks like I'm the only one here, I guess. I drove too fast and didn't make it, uh, but it's supercharging. So I'll say it's supercharging here. That's the rate it is supercharging at. It's telling me that it's gonna supercharge for three minutes, which is not correct because the destination I have picked, I'm gonna remove the charging stop. So supercharging it, it's gonna to need to get to 217 miles. I probably wanna put 300 miles on it. So when it charges, it's charging at 528 miles an hour. So I'm gonna be here about, um, I'll probably put about 300 miles to be safe. Maybe um, give me a little bit more leeway just in case, but that's kind of where we're at. And it said it was gonna be a, a 250 kW max. However, it is not doing that. And it looks like in an hour, I'll get up to 360 miles. So kind of have to stay here an hour. There's another Tesla pulled up and it's gonna charge as well. So pretty, pretty neat experience, but being at a gas station or a charging station relative to a gas station is a lot faster. So you're wasting a lot of time um, staying here. Now, if you're someone that likes to stretch and uh, get a bite to eat, it's actually a good experience. If, if you're not getting a bite to eat, it's definitely a waste of time. Guys, so one thing that I did not like about the Tesla's navigational map is it kept telling me to get to a certain charging station. And I was going 85 miles an hour on I-5, which is a common thing because it's a fast highway. So with that being said, it kept telling me to slow down to 70 miles, 65 miles, and, and so forth. But it did not change the destination of the charging station. So I picked the charging station myself, which is basically the fastest one and try to get to that destination manually. I would have liked it to adjust. Maybe it's something in the settings, but the car did not understand that I'm going faster than the limit is allowed and automatically changed the destination for charging. So I felt like if I was gonna continue going 85 miles an hour, I wouldn't have gotten to the charging destination that set out for me. So I had to pull over and take a different charging destination myself. And that allowed me to fully charge the car, which I'm doing now to get back out there and skip the next charging station. So that's something to look out for. If you take a long trip, it may tell you to go to one destination, but it's probably basing it off 65 miles an hour, which no one goes on these highways. And that uh, could, could be a potential problem if you just follow the map and don't react accordingly to switch. But anyway, so far so good. Um, we're at 288 miles, 289, and we're getting there. All right, guys, so I'm back on the road on Highway 5 here again. I got 216 miles to go in three hours and uh, 352 miles on the battery, it says, although it's not going to be accurate. Now, that's at a 65 mile an hour rating. I'm going 63. And again, it told me you have to stay under or at 75 to uh, reach that destination. If you don't, it's gonna make you stop at another supercharging station. So now I see why it may have wanted me to go a specific speed limit to get to destination A to save time not having to stop by a second location. So that's kind of where we're at uh, with, um, with the charging and the stations. I set the speed limit to 75. I'm gonna try to keep it there and not have to stop at another supercharging station uh, right now, which uh, which would kind of suck, but it would be like a 10 minute stop. So from my experience, it seems like the supercharger kicks on really quickly and it gives you that first initial charge at a very rapid rate. 
of 150 kW is what I reached max pretty much. And then it just boots it right back down. Uh, closer to the end, it was at like 18 kW, 19 kW. So I was waiting 15 minutes to get 10 miles and I just said, forget it, I'm gonna bounce. So I left thinking that with a 350 mile plus charge on the battery with 217 or so miles to go, I would be okay. But that's contingent on the speed limit and that's where we're at. Another beautiful scene with snow on the mountaintop in LA area. Actually, this is Lebec, I believe. So far, just to comment on the autopilot, it's been great or the full self-driving. Uh, I've been able to relax a bit, although this is quite of a long drive. I haven't had to worry about the car not keeping in lane or the distance between this car and another car in front of me. The Tesla's doing well. I charged back up to 300 miles really quickly. I think the trick is to charge to 80 miles, get out of there, go to the next station, charge 80 miles again, because it seems like the last 20% of battery charging is very slow. I am now at my second supercharging station. I went ahead and got Chipotle. So I've been eating this whole trip, but it's funny is the same people that were at uh, the first supercharge station are there in that white uh, Model X. So, uh, this is how this one looks. So a lot more cars here. It's just down the road. So looks like 2LA <coughs> from SF, you're charging twice. Now this one's charging a little bit slower at 100K W. So it's going to take me 55 minutes to get a full charge. I will probably charge it somewhat full and maybe 80%. This is a high charge station and then go from there. This is actually a Tesla lounge inside where you could have coffee and espresso while you wait for your Tesla to charge. You get a key here. The key pad is on your navigation from the Tesla. And inside, typically pre-COVID, there's people and just enjoying their, their time. for Tesla owners. This one is currently uh, closed, so they have a bar here. Some food on this side that you can purchase, and then some games. Uh, really nice lounge. <clears throat> Definitely worth checking out if you uh, stop by the Tesla Superchargers at Kettleman. Cool. Tesla to my friend's house. Check out his Lambo. It's not clean, but man, that's a sick ass car. Now, if you think this is sick, check out the other one. There's my Tesla back there getting charged. I gotta head back. It was his birthday we celebrated. And this is a Lamborghini Taurus. Got to drive it last night. This thing is sweet. Tesla Taurus. Anyway. The car made it, took two stops. Now I know to stop for a less time period. Thanks for watching the videos, like and subscribe.